Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video, and I wanted to do a video about this machine that I own, Computer Space. And the reason is because uh, I've just had a big, large number of new subscribers to my channel, probably because uh, John of John's Arcade uh, interviewed me about a week ago, and I've suddenly got a whole bunch of people visiting my website. And uh, yes, I run the Computer Space Fan website. In fact, here it is, right beside the machine. Um, yeah, what can I tell you? I've been running that website now for, uh, oh, about 12 years, I think it was. I think in the interview, uh, when I was talking to John, I mentioned it was something like 18, 15, 18 years. It hasn't been that long. Uh, early 2000s, I basically started the website. Had a lot of fun, met some very interesting people, uh, Ed Freeze among them, like uh, in John's video interview. Tell you what, I'll put a, a link to John's um, interview down below, and um, also a link to computerspacefan.com. There's no doubt about it, Computer Space is pretty groovy. Came out in 1971, and uh, was the project of Nolan Bushnell of Atari fame. And Ted Dabney, who he co-founded Atari with. Uh, all of these details are on my website, and I uh, really recommend you check it out. Uh, not that I want to pimp my website too much, but there's so much to talk about with this uh, machine. And this video is already going to be about 20 minutes. I don't want to just bog it down forever. Um, one thing that's worth noting... Uh, John, in his video, described it as the very first arcade machine, or our, uh, first coin-op video game. That's technically not true, though. Uh, there was a game released on the, at uh, the University of Stanford, uh, which was called Galaxy Game. Details on my website. And Galaxy Game came out about a month beforehand. It played for a dime, and it was uh, kind of a similar Space War idea like this one. But... The difference is, um, sort of depends on how you want to define what was the first arcade machine, because the Galaxy game could only be played on that uh, on, on the, the campus uh, ground. You couldn't take it to an arcade. You couldn't... Uh, computer Space is the first commercial uh, coin-op video game, I guess you would say. There were several of these made, and they appeared in bars and in arcades and even in and scenes in Jaws. So that's why I think John was saying this was the first arcade machine or the first coin-op video game when technically it was really Galaxy Game. But that's uh, that's semantics. I have a feeling I actually saw a uh, computer space. It, it may have been the very first video game I ever saw. Now I know what my very first video game was that I ever played and that was not this. And I'll do another video about that sometime. But I think I saw one of these. My family went to Seattle for Christmas one year. I think it was 1973. And uh, because we live in Vancouver, or at least we were, we were on one of the islands near Vancouver at the time, we took a ferry boat from where we are down to Seattle. And on the return trip, I am fairly sure in the ferry terminal, I saw this machine. Because that's why when I got into MAME, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that weird looking machine. I want to play that again. So if anybody used to work at the ferry terminal in Seattle that went back to Vancouver in, say, 1972, 1973, and if you want to let me know, did you have a computer space in your terminal somewhere in like a recreational lounge area? If you did, that was the very first arcade machine I ever saw. But there's so many things you're going to see in this video that I just don't really have all the time to describe. This video is going to be about 20 minutes long already, and I don't want to make it even longer. So you're going to see things like, um, you can see how the rocket can steer his shots. Um, Ed Freeze talked with John in that interview about something called hyperspace mode. That exists. I haven't got time to show you that. It's just, there's just so much to do with this machine. So... I hate to say it, but yeah, let's, uh, if you want to find out more details about this, please check out my website. And uh, again, before I actually uh, show you more about this particular machine, I do want to say a big thank you to John for uh, talking about my website and doing that interview, and a big welcome to all the new subscribers that joined my channel because I think of uh, what John did. 
So welcome, and yes, thank you very much for uh, coming and checking out my stuff. Now what can I tell you about my computer space? Uh, I got it from John's Jukes, which is a local pinball shop here in uh, Vancouver. And I'll put a link to his website below. It's flippers.com. Happened to be in there with a buddy of mine who owns an Elvira Party Monsters pinball machine. He was looking for some parts. And lo and behold, this machine is sitting in the corner. And it's functional. And I was just floored. I thought, there's that machine that I've been thinking about ever since I started playing around with MAME. Wow! He wanted quite a bit of money for it. I had to do a little bit of uh, financial reconsideration, but brought it home. Been very, very happy with it. Uh, as mentioned in the interview, the first time I fired it up, the sound was very warbly. kind of sounded like uh, distorted or something. And I contacted John, and he was very uh, quick to reply to me, saying, uh, just pop out each of the circuit boards, run an eraser along the uh, traces, and give that a shot. Boom! Fixed it right away which I can tell you is quite a relief. So what can I show you about this machine itself? Well, uh, to go back to my website for a second, that is technically not my machine that I use for the home page. Uh, somebody had uploaded some very nice high-res images of, her, of their red computer space, and I said, hey, do you mind if I borrow the use of your screenshot? And he said, yeah, sure, no problem. So I've been using that for years. You can see, let me zoom in. I've got like little links here about uh, all the different things you can check out for computer space. One major difference between uh, this fellow's computer space and my own machine is mine actually has a flaw, a bit of a scratch right on the front of it. Um, I mean, they've all got little bits of dings and stuff, but this one right along this corner here, you can see I've got a big chunk taken out there. That's that's unfortunate, but outside of that, I mean, it at least fully functions. It's uh, it's got a few little minor scratches here and there. Other than that though, I'm, I've been very happy with it for years. When I received mine, uh, much like John's, I think my little computer space label thing, now in John's case, it's kind of lying in here inside the hood. Uh, mine had just sort of popped forward. So I think what I did was, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up and show you inside in a minute. But I think what I did was I just sort of reached inside there and pulled that back and it's been sitting there perfectly ever since. So yeah, uh, let's take a few glances at the computer space shape and design. It's it's a really, really very, very sexy uh, arcade machine. I mean, unlike its uh, successors, there's nothing quite like this machine. So let's uh, let's rotate it around and show you what it looks like from different angles here. So here's a nice three-quarter view of computer space. It's um, it's actually not as tall as you would think. Uh, it's 66 inches tall from top to bottom. So when I play it, I have to kind of stoop down to um, to play the thing fully. And uh, from the front of the control panel, which sticks out the furthest, if you were to measure from here to the very back, uh, 30 inches. So it gives you a rough idea. And of course, uh, it's mentioned on my website, but I'll bring it up again. Here is the dreaded footprint. You'll notice I got some groovy shag carpeting there. Uh, on my website, I tell the tale of when I first thought of buying computer space, I wanted to make sure it was going to fit through my door. So I measured the front of the um, cabinet and found it was 28 inches. I thought, oh, perfect, that'll easily fit through my door, which is 29 and a quarter or something. Unfortunately, when I got it home, I then discovered, yeah, it's 28 at the front. But it's 30 at the back. If you were to, I'll rotate this round in a minute, but uh, it's it's slightly tapered. And uh, that was a bit of a nightmare because I had spent all this money, got it to my home, and couldn't actually get it through the door. I did manage to uh, be very, very careful and slide it in, but it was not easy. Now there's two things about the computer space control panel that I find interesting. And uh, you might think I've got my camera off center. But if you look, the rest of the cabinet is square against me here. The control panel is actually off-center for some strange reason. But thank goodness it was. It was only because of that that I was able to get it through the door of my apartment. I was able to use this little uh, uh, indentation to my advantage. 
The other interesting thing about the computer space control panel is the actual buttons themselves. As you can see, and I'm going to fire it up here in a minute, we've got fire your missile, thrust, rotate left and right. Very much like asteroids. But on an asteroids machine, rotate left and right are actually over here, and your thrust and fire are on this side. So you have to almost cross your arms if you're going to be playing this like you're playing an asteroids machine. There's the hood. Now you'll see that it's actually um, not quite as deep as where the control panel is. So if that is 30 inches from front to back, the top area is actually only 27 inches from, top to, uh, from front to back. Here's the coin return mechanism. Can't tell if mine is an original or not. If so, it's super shiny and very, very clean. Like, it looks brand new. And here is the dreaded rear section. Now, as I said before, 30 inches from left to right there, so be sure to measure your doors if you're going to get one of these. Got that sexy little taper shape. Sp uh, uh, fan is there. Speaker hole is there. Just about make it out, it's a bit too dark. Maybe I'll be, I'll be switching to doing some of this uh, with the lights on in a moment. And there's my serial number, 10126. Okay, now that I've got the light on, you can see the speaker grill a lot better there. So let's open this sucker up and show everybody what's inside. And yes, it does make that noise naturally. Here we go, there's the other side of the door. You can see the speaker there, just been wired across to the TV. Fan. Mine is also the Sprite brand that John had, so I think that is original hardware. Linear power supply. Here are my circuit boards, and as mentioned, you can make out the rocket ship in its different positions there. And that bottom one is actually the UFOs, the bad guys. Here's the back of my TV. Now, in both of the computer spaces that Ed Freeze and John own, theirs are actually um, exposed, but mine's still got the casing on the back. And it does say that it, is an, that it is an SF chassis. Here, let me just zoom in here. Here we go. SF3102VYE. The 15SE chassis. General Electric. Moving over from the door and below the TV. Oh, uh, you can ignore this. I was trying to do some um, ferret uh, reduction of uh, interference. That's not normally part of the uh, work. I added that myself. Didn't make any difference. Uh, but anyway, a big transformer coil down there. But um, this is what the inside of the machine looks like. And there's that uh, can. Now, some people describe it as a paint can or as a gas can. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, I'm going to try and pull my can out because uh, when John was first taking his apart, he couldn't quite figure out how to do so. And I'll just show you. Basically, there's, um, there's a little clasp-shaped bent piece of metal and then this L bracket. So to take the can out, what you want to do is just grab it, pull it up a bit, slide it out. There you go. You can see i got some quarters in there, I've been playing it already. So there's my gas tank, or paint can, whatever it is. Um, I thought it was hilarious when Ed Freeze was talking on the show about how there's a rumor some of the engineers would actually do a line of cocaine on these things. So of course, I had to take my can out and see if that was true. Uh, mine looks pretty brand new, so this might be a replacement unit. It does fit perfectly into the bracket, but it uh, doesn't look like it's 40 years old in my opinion. Still, I don't really see any scratches that would indicate um, the use of cocaine on here. I mean. I'm no expert, but I don't see anything that looks like little lines. I do notice um, underneath here on this surface you can kind of make out a few scratches. Don't know if those are the ones that... Uh, I don't think that would give much of a 
surface for snorting up with, but hey, who knows? Anyway, there's my can. I noticed when John was interviewing Ed Freeze, I had him play a little bit of computer space, but unfortunately the way the camera lined up, you couldn't really see gameplay or hear it very clearly. So I've decided I'm going to throw a couple samples onto this video. So now I've turned on computer space. It does make a rather loud whirring noise. Wait till you see what it's like when the game is playing. But uh, there you see all those lights are uh, keeping the control panel well lit. I thought you might also like to see what it looks like lit up from inside. So this is the game turned on. And I've turned off my uh, light that I had on out here. But you can see there's a row of lights there illuminating that uh, computer space instruction sheet. And if we go further down inside the guts, that's what's behind the control panel. And there's the coin mechanism. There you go, that's inside computer space. All right, let's coin up and have a game. Ah, oh, you bugger. Ah, oh, he's off to a nasty start. The AI in this game is really tough. And here's another thing not a lot of people record. I'm going to just play a game here and have you listen to just the sound effects themselves. They are as grating and as rough on the ears as they sound in this audio. Oh, you bugger. I'm going to see if I can get my score to roll. You see how I'm at 9? What do you see what happens when I hit 10? If I hit 10. Look at that C shape. The reverse C. Now it's like a U. You see, that's, that's, the, that's that hexadecimal issue that uh, we figure is going on. Now I did ask Ted Dabney about that. He says that, that, that what you're seeing there is actually a problem with uh, one of the, uh, did he say the decoder? Can't remember, but he said that that was actually a flaw 
in my computer space, but a lot of owners have reported this exact issue. And uh, there was a link, I'll see if I can find it and include it in the description. There was a link that actually explained why these, why these strange symbols appear. Anyway, there you go. That is Computer Space. A simulated space battle that pits computer-guided saucers against a rocket ship that you control. And we'll see you down the rabbit hole.